Who doesn't like a book? But inside, you've got a, a gecko. It doesn't set off any metal detectors. This is an example of how tortoises are frequently smuggled and they're all taped to prevent them from moving. I think this is the illegal way they are coming in. Illegal traders themselves have got very savvy. They are selling their products through cyberspace. Carousel, yeah. Okay, like I took a picture of the snake just now, yeah. Just put in the caption, very rare species. Good deal, no, no hassle, don't need license. And that's it. And I die, good, you buy back some more from me. Untuk makluman semua, uh, satu ketika dulu hutan kita uh, hampir melebihi 80% buku bumi di, 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 di Semarang Malaysia ini ditutupi oleh hutan. Jadi pada masa pada masa tersebut, ibu panggilan hidup dengan bebas. Bila masuk tahun 60-an, 70-an, 80-an, mana pembangunan itu besar bangun uh, untuk uh, rakyat. Jadi banyak kawasan-kawasan hutan ini telah dibuka bagi tujuan kebanyakannya untuk pembangunan uh, perumahan seperti perumahan dan juga pertanian. Jadi benda ini berlaku uh, begitu cepat dan uh, pada hari ini kawasan uh, habitat di depan ini uh, telah kurang uh, pada 50 persen lah, yang patut. There was a huge boom in social media where wildlife trade was concerned. We started seeing an increase in the number of people that were actively participating on social media forums. They were interested in buying and selling animals, they were interested in asking about animals, they wanted to know prices, and we realised that it was really becoming quite popular. We identified 14 Facebook groups and we spent 30 minutes a day, just 30 minutes a day, to figure out just what level of activity was taking place on these 14 Facebook groups. More than 300 animals were being offered for sale. Um, and we can say that they were being offered for sale because prices were mentioned. Prices were specifically mentioned in at least 30 posts. 
and for just these 30 animals, the cumulative value was about 184,000 ringgit at that time. I think this really boils down to a um, demand and supply issue. As long as there is going to be a demand, the supply will consistently be there. The wildlife department has got its hands full. We have been doing the best we can in trying to curb this uh, illegal trade. But now uh, the uh, illegal traders themselves have got very savvy. Uh, they have gone into cyber space and uh, they are selling their products through cyberspace. Uh, and of course, with the uh, invent of Facebook and uh, advertisement on, on internet, uh, they are allowed to spread the information. And there are always, when there are buyers, there will be people who will break the law in order to try and uh, gain uh, profit by selling these uh, animal parts and species that are quite uh, uh, precious to us. It's really quite sad because you hear a baby crying. And somebody's obviously sort of videoing this whole experience. The box arrives, the box is opened, this little baby in the box is just wailing. All you hear is a wail. It's about a baby animal that is stolen from the wild. It doesn't belong in a box. It doesn't belong in a small box. It would have been shipped by post. It had no right to be in that position. You see, the problem is there will be, there'll be a lot of uh, uh, rich guy or what say, I want, I fancy this uh, clouded leopard or something like that. Well, we'll get around like, okay, this person wants this. You'd be surprised that most of these animals are owned by rich people. Not The poor will not be able to afford because they are all in thousands and all that. You know? When you look at history, it was the rich and famous and the royalty that used to showcase their animals. And it was always linked with prestige, status and being somebody. If I can show that I own this animal, then I become now a person of prestige, status, acquisition. is part of my wealth, part of my trophying right now. The royalties and the kings and queens would then uh, feature these animals because everybody was curious to see these animals. It's probably one of the, the, the early uh, precursors of zoos and they used to feature these animals and people used to come in and watch and observe these animals. And people have this uh, process where they actually show these animals to their friends and they publicize. In the social media world, it means I'm going to get more likes. Especially if you have a, a cute, fuzzy little animal that everybody is uh, very excited about, you're going to get a lot of your friends coming around to your, to your page, liking it, and it goes viral. This is one of the ways that people are making themselves more famous uh, by linking themselves up to exotic animals. To the buyer, that somehow is appealing and that gets posted online, it gets a lot of likes, it gets a lot of comments. Of course, there are a lot of angry people who say, look, this is not right. Um, but clearly that's not what matters to the buyer.
because as a pet interest, a hobbyist, okay, we always try to you know get something different, special. The interest that you know, sparks us to like, I want this, I want that. I had two pet shops. Then eventually, I was doing uh, some exhibitions and all that around Malaysia. I've owned numerous pets, uh, so I mean, I mean, I have regretted selling some. They did a head count. They said there's probably only not more than 700 or so heads left in China and Vietnam. This is where this lizard comes from. Like this is very uh, sought after in the European countries or in the States. Eventually, most of the hobbies, they will go something higher end. They want something more rare because it will look cool in the exotic community. Like when I was younger, of course, so we jumped to it, just the, the excitement of being able to get one. But as you grow on, grow up on this hobby, then you will realize that it's actually uh, disheartening to see the animal just dying like that. You know that if you know the know how, you have the husbandry, then the animal could survive. But most of the traders are just interested in making money. So they always want to sell just to make a quick buck. And that's it. And I die, good, you buy back some more from me. I think that's an interesting thing. This one piece will make 52 layers. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen. All for free. No subscription required. Kita tengok dalam masa tahun 2012, 2013, benda ni semakin menjadi-jadi. Dan uh, banyak hidupan liar, hidupan liar yang terancam ke, yang sangat terancam ke, dia uh, membuat urusan jual beli di dalam talian. Dia punya modus operandi adalah mudah aja. Kebanyakannya dia akan uh, letakkan upload dekat uh, sama ada Facebook atau Instagram. Kebanyakan daripada profil yang ada adalah umur antara 20-an sehingga ke 45 macam itulah. So, ini adalah individu yang uh, biasa menggunakan uh, internet, ada Facebook, ada Insta. Uh, social media and online platforms uh, obviously made it really easy. Because uh, now by using this technology, they can easily target the mass market. They can publish a product and everybody can get to know it in a split of second. There are 30 kumpulan yang berkaitan dengan uh, penjualan hidupan liar ini. So, dia ada grup dia, grup dia. Cumanya dia dalam grup dia itu ada yang uh, close. Dia sama so, sesama ahli kumpulan saja yang uh, menjual ataupun yang mengiklankan hidupan liar tersebut. Kebanyakannya yang yang uh, upload status itu adalah dia sebagai dropship.
dan apabila ada individu yang berminat dia akan direct message kepada uh, penjual tersebut so selalunya akan berlaku apabila ada persetujuan individu pembeli itu akan uh, membayar secara online ataupun bank in kepada uh, individu yang melakukan dropship tadi ni hidup pala ni akan dihantar sama ada melalui pos ataupun bas Pembeli sendiri akan mengambil uh, hidupan liar tersebut di mana-mana perhentian bas ataupun mana-mana tempat yang telah dijanjikan. Dan seterusnya, mengambil, dia perlu mengambil gambar dan serah pada broker. So, broker yang akan menghantar maklumat balik, okay, barang telah diserahkan dan baru dimasukkan duit pada supplier. Akta yang ada hanya apabila dia memiliki hidupan liar tersebut. Kita mungkin boleh tangkap ataupun dapat hidupan liar tersebut tetapi orang ataupun individu yang uh, Uh, pos uh, hidupan liar tersebut ataupun melakukan urus niaga tersebut penjual tu kita tidak dapat tangkap. So sekarang ni supplier memang takkan ada kena-kena. Broker pun sebenarnya dia tak akan berjumpa supplier. So. Kita pernah juga uh, buat penahanan broker yang kita cuba minta dia sendiri yang uh, hantar kan. Tapi in the end kita still tak dapat dia punya supplier sebab dia sendiri pun tak pernah berjumpa dengan supplier dia. Dia menguruskan saja. The account on his side probably is fake ones. I mean, not his name. Probably they use a foreigner or something like that. Posting di media sosial boleh dipadam pada beberapa masa dalam masa sama juga uh, agak susah untuk kita sebagai yang kata bagi pasukan untuk penguasaan penguat kuasaan untuk melakukan uh, tindakan selanjutnya kerana orang tidak meletakkan apa apa detail yang berkenaan dengan pembeli ini dia punya detail dia agak kurang. Selalunya dia akan menggunakan sama ada uh, akaun palsu ataupun gambar profil lainlah, bukan gambar dia. Uh, dan kebanyakannya apabila berlaku uh, katalah pilihan tahu profil itu, dia akan tubuhkan satu uh, profil barulah uh, ataupun satu nama baru ataupun satu kumpulan baru. Jadi ini ini menyukarkan kita lah. Apabila berlaku pertukaran grup dan sebagainya, ya, jadi kita kena monitor dari awal balik. Dan lebih daripada 10,000 akaun ataupun uh, yang aktif uh, berkenaan dengan penjualan ataupun berinteraksi di dalam online untuk penjualan hidupan lain. All these platforms, right? Uh, they do have a term and conditions. It's said in the term and condition which you can't have any illegal activities. Okay, so this is very clear to the public. However, obviously, these people, they misuse the platform. And in the same time, you can communicate with them. And all these platforms provide a facility to have a secure and private chat, okay? And that makes it more difficult for investigators to have access to these chats and identify the right persons who is behind this animal trafficking. For instance, by using encryption, you can easily make a private chat. And uh, as you know, it's impossible to break the encryption. The biggest challenges is data privacy and how the platforms makes the data or makes the communication private. Everybody's operating under the cover of 
uh, behind the computers or on their phone, it's not always easy to identify where these individuals are. Study business from two zero zero eight. I have some big size albino iguana. Yeah, it's very tame. Next one I can name the monkeys. It's marmoset, white ear marmoset. This is Egyptian fox. This is from Sudan. This is albino tegu. I do all the legal way. I get the, my license from Pahilitan. This is my import document. So export, import, or we throw here. This is my every bill. You see how many? Every bill is a lot. This is a lot of paperwork. Feeding cost per month three thousand to five thousand, and for one year, my import and export other charges is around forty thousand to fifty thousand ringgit fit like 10,000 ringgit or below 10,000 or 15,000. Each reptiles and each animals, they need the microchips. A microchip, we pay about 10 to 15 ringgit for each animal. We have to pay the box charges and handling fees. It's about 2,000 to 3,000 US dollar. Ini yang itu otter. Is this illegal or? Illegal, of course. Hongkang, ini burung hantu, owl. This owl, I think is a white face. It's no mistake. Which one is legal and illegal? No legal. No legal. Ah, no legal. All, All the owl, no legal. Ah, uh, Kang, slow lorries, no, no legal. Otter, no legal. All of this illegal. As a leopard cat, that's killing monkey. Not suitable to keep. You see, all the people they are catch and they are try to make money. I think this is illegal way they are coming in. How are yeah. the illegal, usual illegal ways that they come in that you know mm, of? The first thing is if a legal way they have a proper box for the shipping uh, because this is. We can't see anything inside, so we don't know the inside is what animal is is it. So this is, I'm sure, the illegal they are doing. Carousel, yeah. Okay, like I took a picture of the snake just now, yeah. Uh, just put in the caption, snake for sale. You can just put something to attract people, like very rare species, uh, good for beginners. You can say, good deal, no, no hassle, don't need license, uh, you know, something like that, then it's easy. Then you get people who want exotic pets, somebody they will go through it, you know, probably, you know. By tomorrow or so, somebody might just pick it up or anything like that. Now, it's e in a way, it's easy because you don't need, you don't need a shop. You won't get busted, <laughs> so you, have, you can do a lot of fake accounts and all that. There's a lot of ways you can that, escape the, the law.
the seller requires that you have three head, four heads before he comes. Normally, the trappers are based away from the city, you know, so for the seller, it must be feasible for him to travel there to collect. For example, a monkey for maybe hundred ringgit, he will probably be selling to the the buyer, the potential buyer, at about two thousand or three thousand for hundred ringgit product. He can make so much. See, that's why he will take the risk because it's like more than tenfold of the profits. And for some of the illegal trade, they're really pretty expensive. The value is equivalent to a down payment for a small house in Malaysia. So we're not talking about 10 ringgit or 20 ringgit, we're really talking about hundreds and thousands of ringgit. The Malayan tiger is very specific in the sense that it is only found in Peninsula Malaya. We are putting a large effort in order to conserve the tigers in Malaya. We only have about less than 200 of them. But you know, uh, tiger parts now is a worldwide market. Uh, and people come in here just looking for tigers in order to put the snares and catch them. Because one tiger can be sold for anywhere between 150,000 US to 200,000 US. And every part of the tiger is used in order to, to, to sell and make a profit. So, there are people in our jungles who have come from Vietnam, who have come from Cambodia and Laos, and including locals, uh, who are hunting them. The total of confiscated ivories consists of 3,692 kilograms of whole and partial tusks and 228 kilograms of semi-finished products. This, this tusk is heavy. Um, of course, these are beads uh, made of the tusk, uh, not that very heavy, you know, but this is these tusks are heavy. This is machine cut. The border trade is sedikit, kebanyakannya is sedikit. Jadi dia punya rangkaian tu lebih lebih luas. Dan apa yang di uh, di studok ni, dia tak semestinya uh, hidupan liar atau wildlife. Kadang-kadang dia berskali dengan dadah, berskali dengan senjata api ataupun berskali dengan benda-benda yang terlarang. Contohnya, gading gajah, sumbu badak yang ada nilai tinggi. Contohnya gading gajah. So selalunya gading gajah ni dia daripada Afrika lah. Sama ada uh, gading yang uh, sebatang ataupun yang telah diukir dan sebagainya ataupun telah dipotong-potong so dibawa masuk ke uh, di transit bukan untuk kegunaan Malaysia tapi sebagai transit untuk dihantar semula ke selalunya ke China lah jadi uh, ini adalah uh, yang bernilai tinggi lah dan dia ada sedikit yang terancang uh, sama ada di dikontrol oleh di Afrika uh, dan juga di negara-negara lain yang menyebabkan barang ini uh, ataupun gading ini dia melalui pelabuhan Malaysia dan dia dihantar. Most people were able, was were actually able to find everything, so we have to do a better job of hiding stuff. Yeah, maybe create more secret pockets inside. So what we're going to show you is how smugglers commonly smuggle things on their persons. Most common when they are travelling by air, 
For example, this is an egg vest. People have been caught trying to smuggle eggs on themselves. Sometimes it's on their body, sometimes it's strapped on their legs. Keeps them nice and warm and doesn't set off any metal detectors, so everything goes through quite smoothly. Sometimes you also have these specially modified um, vests or jackets. And here, fake of course, ivory. Additional pockets. You can carry pretty much anything as long as it is not metal. It doesn't set off metal detectors. And if you add more clothes, you get a little bit puffy. You, you don't set any alarm bells off. And this is an example of how tortoises are frequently smuggled and they're all taped to prevent them from moving. Every single one of them are alive because it's for the pet trade. Another example, birds in a bottle. And if you go online and Google, you'll find many, many pictures of birds being smuggled like this. They've got holes to let them breathe, but one of the easiest and fastest ways to smuggle birds. And the, the great book with a surprise in it. Who doesn't like a book? But inside, you've got a, a gecko. And these are all actual examples of how smugglers have been arrested. We are seeing a lot of our native animals being exported for sale elsewhere in the world. We are also seeing non-native animals coming into the country. And so you've, you've got these dynamics as a source and as a consumer, as well as a transit country for things that aren't really targeted to local demand. We're not saying that this is a problem here in Malaysia. This is a global problem. Most hunters go out at night, or early hours in the morning. Definitely, they have machetes and homemade guns. Mostly, two or three percent, because if you get a big animal, you cannot handle alone. You cannot carry it alone. Poachers, there's two two type. I mean, for poachers, it's like it's either for food or for the pet. Everything is worth money. Any wildlife can be sold. We found baby gibbons. We found baby sun bears. It's really quite shocking. They were animals that were considered totally protected under the Wildlife Conservation Act of Peninsular Malaysia. A number of these individuals are actually offering animals that you cannot sell. The more worrying question is, how on earth did these individuals get these animals? The vast majority of them were native animals, which means people were going into the forest, they were trapping them. And what's really surprising, even more shocking about this, was that almost all of them were juvenile animals. Um, and particularly for mammals, it's a it's a pretty serious problem. When you take a baby away from its mother, from its family, you don't know how long they will survive. Their own support system in the wild has been essentially taken away. Nampak tak? Bunyi ni stress, dia stress. Dia nak mak ni. Dia nak suckle, dia nak dia nak menyusu. Hidupan dia yang uh, dari segi juvenal ni kebanyakannya adalah comel. Sebahagian daripada keluarga dia. 
Maknanya dari segi ke setengah tu mem- diletakkan pakaian, dia bagi makanan yang dimakan oleh manusia. Ah, Encik, nak, nak keluar dah ke? Encik nak keluar dah ke? Dah. Jom. <tuh> dah lapar, ha? Kita tahu, dia dengan mak dia akan sentiasa sampai setahun ke dua tahun baru dia akan uh, uh, belajar berdikari sendiri. Tapi bila yang beli anak-anak macam ni, uh, kecil lagi dia dah dipisahkan dengan mak dia. Stress factor benda-benda macam tu akan menyebabkan risiko penyakit itu tinggi. Dan dari segi dia punya uh, behavior dia akan berubah daripada normal kepada tak normal. Itu uh, yang akan efek dia punya uh, apa jangka masa panjang dia. Lah. Kita ada kes yang uh, orang beli lah, orang beli kan, so dia beli, tapi and then dia buat serahan. Cuma nya owner dia dah jaga dia dalam satu tempoh masa lah, mungkin enam bulan, so dia tak nak langsung dekat orang lain selain owner dia. So disebabkan benda tu suka nak jaga. So dari situ ada stress factor, dia kena penyakit lah. And then kita start untuk bagi rawatan, tapi dia tak respon dengan rawatan, so mati. So heartbreaking lah sebenarnya. Kita buat semua benda, tapi still kat hujungnya kadang-kadang tak boleh nak survive. Sayanglah. Sayang. They had no respect for protecting species in the wild. They had no respect for law enforcement in the authorities. It was a it was a crime, pure and simple. Because they knew for a fact that they were offering animals that they were not supposed to offer for sale. Boy snail ni sama ada mati ataupun kalau dia survive pun kaki dia putus. Dan dari segi jerat pula kita uh, dalam masa lima tahun juga kita telah memusnahkan lebih daripada 2000-3000 jerat. Masuk saya sini jerat dia dah jerat dawai. Kalau dia menggunakan jerat di lapangan di hutan bukan saja hidupan liar yang ditarget tu dapat tapi juga dia akan melibatkan hidupan liar lain harimau gajah dan sebagainya tapi dan sebagainya yang boleh uh, membunuh hidupan liar tersebut dan boleh mengakibatkan uh, kepupusan secara setempatlah locally extinct Kita di Jabatan Perintah ini, kita ada um, Wildlife Rescue Center yang berpusat di Sungkai di mana hidupan-hidupan liar yang dirampas ataupun yang cedera, kita akan hantar ke sana. Uh, kita uh, ubat, pulihkan dia, kita akan simpan sampai 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 mati, kita akan simpan bagi makan. Nah. Stasi. Hai. <tuh> Kita ada lebih 300 uh, individu di mana termasuk apa, uh, primate, termasuk juga ya, apa, uh, mamalia besar dan juga burung-burung. So, ada juga rawatan lain seperti tapi yang masuk ke sini di mana kena, kena, apa, uh, kena kesan jerat. Sekarang kita berada di kompleks okay. burang. Uh, ini memang saya dan pasukan saya involve secara uh, directly kerana kita berurusan dengan penjual kita melalui mana asalnya dia bermula dengan promosi pada online so dia jual cadangan cadangnya dia mula nak kata dia jual di bawah matahari lah semasa uh, kita buat uh, urusan jual beli saya terima uh, beruang ni dalam keadaan yang sangat uh, kecil di mana masih baby dan bulu dia pun baru masih sikit mana ada body dia pun masih merah lagi. Di situ kita tak nampak dari segi kebajikan mana dia bagi susu ataupun bagi apa-apa simbol dan saya juga pasti uh, ibu dia 
telah dibunuh untuk dapatkan uh, beruang ni. Masa-masa kita boleh uh, beruang ni, dan kita dapati ini bukan beruang Malaysia dan ini adalah beruang uh, luar negara di mana kita sebagai pembeli tak sedar yang kita membeli ni juga bukan sekadar depan liar yang di Malaysia kita juga telah mengata, mengambil ada hazanah dari negara lain kebanyakan pembeli ini adalah kita tahu dia adalah antara pencipta depan liar pencipta haiwan dan depan liar yang dibeli kebanyakan uh, pembeli kurang pengetahuan berkenaan dengan depan liar yang dibeli Nampak comel kan kucing batu ni? Memang comel lah. Tapi bila dah besar sikit, dia mula dah agresif lah. Bila agresif, agresif sangat, orang akan ah, lepas kat luar lah. Ataupun ah, orang salah dekat, dekat ah, perintahan. Sebab ah, kita jumpa. Sebab Indian nanti, kebanyakan bila ada masalah, orang akan cari, orang akan hantar ke perhilitan tau. Sebab orang tak dapat nak handle, tak dapat, tak dapat nak jaga. So masa tu orang cakap, akak oh, benda ni serahan, apa semua. Mungkin orang sebenarnya menyimpan secara tidak sah. We we have continuous programs, uh, whereby a special committee has been set up, and whatever information that we have that we we pick up, and uh, our 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 cyber crime unit, whereby they know how uh, goods are being transferred from one area to another. Uh, that is when we call in all these people who are involved. So we also help, uh, have help or, from international agencies who have experiences in this and they are also advising us. Kita kena bekerjasama rapat dengan Interpol. Pasal maklumat tu memang selalunya Interpol lah yang bagi, Interpol yang bagi kad. Kita lengkap ha, senarai apa yang hidupan yang ada, kalau contohnya pelabuhan, kat pelabuhan mana, kontena yang mana, kapal yang mana, so dia berlabur ke apa, hari bila. So itu maklumat yang 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 komplit. So kita akan membuat rondaan. Uh, boleh kata setiap hari lah. Pitan uh, dengan setiap upaya dengan juga kerjasama dengan agensi uh, setiap upaya untuk uh, mengatasi isu ini dengan melakukan banyak perkara. Kita buat kerjasama dengan tentera, dengan pihak polis, kita buat boots on the ground. That will deter them from coming in and trying to uh, poach our animals in, in, from, the, from the forest. Selama ini kita cukup susah kita nak dawa. Kita tak boleh nak dawa kecuali kecuali orang tu ada memiliki kita boleh dawa. Tetapi dengan uh, pindah nakta kita ni. Kalau dia masuk dalam media sosial, kita boleh tahu itu yang itu yang terbaik lah. Dengan adanya benda ni, maka akan mengurangkan orang jual beli dalam media sosial. We need to change this laws and to make it um, in line with what is happening today, and to and to have make sure that the deterrent uh, for those who break the law, uh, the punishment is equally equally severe and they won't uh, attempt to do it. So these laws are in place, are being there, and I think uh, by 2020, we would see a lot of amendments taking place uh, as far as the ministry is concerned. So my message to them is we are coming, uh, be prepared, and we have given orders uh, what to do, and if you're caught, you will pay heavily uh, for the crime that you have committed.